All right, let's go to Washington now. Welcome back in, reporter for The Daily Caller and host of The Facts, Brianna Lyman, and Project 21 National Advisory Board member, radio host Christopher Arps. Um, Brianna, The Daily Caller, with an interesting piece yesterday when this news broke, talking about the latest developments in the DirecTV, AT&T, Newsmax situation, Senate Republicans, and we're talking about big names here, Ted Cruz, Tom Cotton, Mike Lee, Lindsey Graham, all demanding answers from DirecTV. Ted Cruz tweeting again yesterday, I've got serious concerns about DirecTV's decision to drop Newsmax. It's time for answers. What's, what's the feeling on the Hill about what sort of happens next and how this plays out? Well, I, I think the bigger question is what is the feeling on the Hill from those who aren't speaking out? And that's the Democrats, because we really haven't heard much Democrats come out and speak out in favor of Newsmax and in favor of free speech. And it's just been Republicans. And I think that's the biggest concern here, because Again, you can have the, the entire House come together, pass some kind of resolution, and goes to the Senate. If Democrats aren't on board with protecting the First Amendment and freedom of speech in defense of Newsmax, it's not going to end anywhere. And until you have big people like President Joe Biden speaking out against, you know, conservative networks being pulled off air, we saw with OAN last year, right? Uh, so it's Newsmax this year. Who knows? Next year it could be Fox. So we need everybody to speak out about it. Yeah, Brianna, I wonder if it was a different network, maybe, you know, a more liberal network, if those Democrats would be speaking out and that, that, that would be a problem. Chris, yesterday you had a very important guest on your radio show. Let's listen. What DirecTV said to Newsmax was sort of interesting. They said, we will never pay you one penny. We're not giving you anything, um, which is a bizarre thing. Like, why of all the channels would we not get anything? So it's pretty clear they were trying to demonetize us because they knew that we couldn't accept that. That was Newsmax CEO Chris Ruddy on your show. Chris, so talk to us a little bit more about your interview with him. Yeah, we were very honored yesterday to have Newsmax CEO Chris Ruddy on yesterday to talk about DirecTV's decision last week to ca to cancel or deplatform uh, Newsmax. You know, News or DirecTV is trying to give this message that this was an economic decision that they made, that Newsmax was just asking for way too much money uh, for them to keep on their system. And as Mr. Ruddy said, Newsmax is asking for a dollar from each uh, subscriber a year. And then you have liberal channels that are on Newsmax that are getting 10 and 15 times that much. And he also brought up the point that we brought up here earlier about OAN being canceled uh, last year. And this is the second conservative network to be uh, canceled by this network. Now, they were feeling a bunch of pressure about this. And a couple of days later, after they deplatformed Newsmax, uh, they added a new channel called The First Network, which is a conservative network that, frankly, I'd never heard of before. Yeah, so the situation, and I think when you, it comes to OAN 12 months ago, uh, Democrats still controlled Congress. So that's why you didn't see hearings uh, when OAN was deplatformed 12 months ago. If it was CNN, not OAN, you, you probably would have. Um, I don't know about these, these smaller networks that the ratings, you can count them on one hand, Newsy, NBCLX, Vice News, they all get a fee. MSNBC gets something like $12.00. CNN is owned by the same company that owns AT&T and DirecTV, and they get an $8 fee. Uh, Newsmax asking for $1 over the course of a calendar year. Everybody else gets paid. Why shouldn't Newsmax get paid? That's, that's what this is really all about. Um, and the, the names that are now weighing in on this, Brianna, it, it surprised me. Donald Trump weighing in last week on Thursday and Friday. On Monday, it was Kevin McCarthy. On Tuesday, it was Ron DeSantis. And then yesterday, members of the Senate, uh, also on Tuesday, 17 members of the House took to the floor on Capitol Hill and spoke out about supporting Newsmax, also supporting OAN, but also just censorship. This is America. This is not Chinese state TV. This is not Russian state TV. This is America. All voices should have a platform. All voices. Yeah, you know, James Madison said, he said, public opinion sets bounds to every government. And when you don't allow or when you when you stifle public opinion by stifling and canceling conservative networks and you reduce the amount of uh, opinions that the general public can go to to get, they can go to CNN, they can go to Newsmax, now they can't go to Newsmax, you essentially give the government free reign to kind of do what they want because you don't have as many conservative voices speaking out. And I think that every Republican on the Hill right now, if they really want to take a stand, they should obviously conduct investigations. But they should make it a point to come on Newsmax as often as possible and bring viewers there from, from every other cable provider 
until DirecTV sees that your ratings just keep going up and they made a big mistake. Yeah, big thank you to everybody at home. Uh, I'm getting videos that are actually kind of funny. One guy took a video, sent me the whole thing, of him taking his DirecTV satellite dish oh, off his that. roof yeah. and then throwing it onto the ground. Uh, another guy sent me a video. He put, uh, he put free and he put it at the end of his driveway, the DirecTV satellite dish. People are upset about this. You know, my grandmother had a cable provider um, when she was in her 90s just so she could watch the programs that she liked on a, a particular channel, Smithsonian channel channel was the channel but she likes the shows that's why she had it a lot of people had newsmax for that reason a lot of people have uh, or direct tv rather so they could watch newsmax and and for other channels as well but some people had it specifically for newsmax just a bad really odd business decision as well um okay i want to move on yesterday uh some interesting news nikki haley uh former governor of south carolina ambassador to the u.n she announced she's gonna uh run for president she'll make the formal announcement in a couple weeks the washington post with an interesting report about how slow this race has been to sort of take shape. Don't forget, you know, you rewind the clock, January, February 2007, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton are already in the race looking for the nomination. So one person, and, and Donald Trump, the Washington Post says, might be the problem. One person advising a would-be candidate said concern about Trump's dominance has been driving discussions with candidates who want to know how rivals plan to get around Trump. Others expressed hope that Trump will find himself in a nasty fight this spring with DeSantis that could wound them both. But either way, everyone is getting ready in case Trump falters. Chris, basically the Post saying that other candidates and other big names, maybe including Ron DeSantis himself, are waiting to see how Trump does over the next few months before they make the final call on whether or not to jump in. Is that the right move? Yeah, I think it is. The speculation for Ron DeSantis, Florida governor, is that he wants to wait until May after the Florida legislature ends because he has some top initiatives um, that he wants to to uh, pass. But I think uh, Nikki Haley getting in was very interesting. I think a lot of people are waiting because, uh, you know, we saw in 2016 that if Donald Trump gives you a nickname, um, that nickname sticks with you and you, you can't shake it and it damages your, your credibility. So I think a lot of people are waiting to see how Donald Trump is received by the Republican yeah. electorate, and they'll wait till uh, late spring or May to make a decision. We said this yesterday, Chris. I know you weren't with us. Ronda Sanctimonious is not a good nickname. <laughs> Back no, to the drawing not. board with that one. That one, not going to stick. Yeah. Brianna, you know, I, we were talking about this yesterday, too, is, is how will President Trump react when Nikki Haley makes that announcement, which we think she's going to do on February 15th? Because you have to be careful, right? Because, you know, he, he's known for his nicknames. But um, it seems, though, listening to him when he announced and listening to his speeches, he's kind of taken a little bit of a different route talking about policy and mo moving forward. How do you expect him to react and, and go after Nikki Haley? Uh, I believe he might have retweeted a video on Truth Social or Retruth something uh, when Nikki Haley said, I believe a few years ago, that she would not run if Donald Trump was running. Right. Uh, so I think that's like the first indicator. But I think if he was smart, he wouldn't go after Nikki Haley because if Donald Trump is exerting all of his efforts to go after every single Republican candidate, he looks like this, you know, this bully that the media wants him to be. That's what they want him to do. Uh, whereas if he focuses his effort on one particular candidate who we all believe will be Ron DeSantis, at least he won't have fire coming in on all ends. Yeah, yeah and there, let's be honest, there's been speculation that Nikki Haley and, and, and Trump could be, you know, they could be running mates, um, right. at, you know, at some point. But apparently she called Donald Trump down at Mar-a-Lago and, and said, hey, I'm thinking about running. I know I said I wouldn't if you were in the race. And he said, basically, go ahead, follow your heart, I think is, is, is uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he said. Chris, final thought, 15 seconds. I think that's temporary, but you know, uh, he said DeSantis is, is unloyal for running against him. I think we'll see that same uh, attack against Nikki Haley. Yeah, those two seem to be on a collision course. Uh, Chris Arps, Brianna Lyman, thank you. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Just want to update everybody at home on the AT&T DirecTV situation on this Thursday morning. So a little over a week ago, DirecTV drops Newsmax suddenly from their channel lineup. 13 million homes affected. This is the second politically motivated example of censorship that we've seen from DirecTV in just the last 12 months. But DirecTV has no problem keeping and paying, I might add, 22 liberal news channels that cost subscribers more than Newsmax would cost subscribers on an annual basis they all have lower ratings, all of them, all 22. Former President Donald Trump urged Americans to cancel DirecTV. Ron DeSantis called for an investigation on Tuesday. We are so grateful to everyone who's supporting us on this. If you want to do the same, just go to IWantNewsMax.com or you can call that number right there on your screen. Stay with us. We'll be right back.